Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about Proxmox. Yes, this video will be number 7. In this video I will show how you can do backup or how you can do a snapshot and what's the difference between the both and which one is better for your application and when I should use snapshot or when I should use backup. Remember, this video is number 7, so if you didn't watch the previous videos, look like 1, 2 and continue on, maybe you not have the same configuration that I have, or maybe you not gonna understand exactly what I'm doing. So I suggest you to watch my previous videos and that you can understand exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So it will be a little bit more easy for you to follow this idea. So have this one in mind and if you like this idea, so don't forget to leave a like consider to subscribe for this channel and let's see how we can do it. So before we start to do any installation, let's understand a little bit more about our system and therefore we can start to explain a little bit more about snapshot and backup. First of all, my system is a Proxmox and this Proxmox has only one node in this node, it's called Cyberlab. In this node, Cyberlab, if I come here in summaries, I have uh, 80 gigabytes of run memory, where I'm using a little bit of my virtual machine read, so I have a little bit less than eight available. I have uh, 32 or 36 gigabytes of uh, hard drive and four cores. These four cores, it's true, I have a E53570K, it's quite old processor, but I needed to use this one because I needed to have a physical computer. Initially, I tried to run in a virtual machine, but it didn't work well the way that I was expecting. So the best way is you have a computer running it. After this one, I have a few hard drives, but it's true that I have only one here that have US, where they share between local and local LVM, it means that uh, this 36 gigabytes is part of my local where it saves my US and this uh, local VM is the remain of my hard drive that have a US. I also have a local ZFS where I have a mirror between two hard drives and these two hard drives they compound of 500 gigabytes each and that mirror will be only 500. Why I have a mirror? Because if one hard drive fail I will have exactly the same date in the other one in this way, I am protected against of a failure. Of course, if both hard drive fail, that's it, no chance to recover it. Also, it's good to remember that I only use FS because I have more than a few gigabytes of run memory. If I have just about to run my Proxmox plus my virtual machine, it means that you shouldn't use ZFS because this will use too much of your run memory and that if you don't have enough, they will have uh, bad performance and that will not work as expect. Also in this file system, I have a virtual disk where I have all my virtual machines and here in contains, I have all my containers volumes. Permissions, I don't have anything at this stage. If I look here, I have two virtual machines. Also, I have one template of virtual machine and I have one container and one template of container. Those virtual machines, those containers was great last video. So if you didn't see it, it's worth to have a look at it. So I have this one, I come here in my virtual machine. This virtual machine, if I open here, they have one core where I'm using 93 or 0.95%, almost nothing. And I have around 600 or 700 megabytes of uh, run memory in use and I have 2 gigabytes of available run memory. Also I have a disk with 32 gigabytes, I'm not sure how much they use, but it's 32 gigabytes and the IP address for this machine is 192.168.1.134 and my MAC address for this machine is this one. I can check more information but they don't allow me so much more. So here, now use 100%, I don't know why. But uh, what's the first thing that we're gonna do? We come here in console, the machine is working, and that's uh, if I come initially in snapshot, what I want to do, snapshot. And I will tell the snapshot specific for the virtual machine. What it means? It means that this snapshot cannot be transferred, cannot be saved in other place. They will make a picture for this exactly state of the machine in that specific machine in specific time. So if I come here in snapshot and put take snapshot, so we put the snap one. I can include the run memory or can not include the run memory. What's the difference for it? 
this option will only appear for you if this virtual machine is running. If it's not run, they will not appear run memory. This will mean that this machine will recover exactly that specific state of the machine. So if I select it and my machine is running with um, application A, B and C in the run memory, so they will save it and once that I return my snapshot, they will return exactly that same stage. For me, that's not important, this configuration, so I will come here and put stop or don't allow snapshot of run memory because they're only gonna use a little bit more for my capacity, but it's not worth for me. So I can come here and take snapshot. You're gonna see how fast, they will take a few seconds and it's already done. So if I come here, my snapshot has been completed. It's really fast and they only get a picture for your hard drive in that st exactly state. And you ask, well, why I want to do it? So it's simple, let's uh, open our putty because it will be a big screen and that's uh, let's start configuring our virtual machine. So once that I have my put open, I will log in with my user. In this case, it will be CyberLab. I will put CyberLab, put enter, put my password. And now I have my machine open. What I'm gonna do, I will install Docker only to see how it's work and that uh, we can see how it's work this snapshot. So now to install Docker, it's easy. I will only get this script and put enter. Now I can properly install Docker and I will run suit sh docker get sch and wait it to finish. They will ask my root password or my user password, so we'll tape it and put to enter. So now they will take around two or three minutes until they finish to do the installation, so let's wait. So once that I finish to install my docker, now I can check the revision of the docker that I'm running and I put docker version and run it. So the version is 20, 10, 15. Let's clear this page only to put more in the top and run exactly the same. So now Docker, it's revision 20, 10, 15. So it's installed Docker, but I didn't like it. I make some mistakes and I want to delete this Docker and return the machine at the same state that it was when I did my snapshot. What can I do? I can come here and uninstall my Docker. Yes, but not all the files will be removed from my system. So I have another option. I can close it. So I can come here and roll back my snapshot and put yes. So now is the time that they will take some minutes until they roll back everything and it's done. So let's come here my console because I didn't save as a run memory. They stop my virtual machine. I can start it again. And when they are starting, I know that the IP address will be end 134. So let's open the boot and start to configure everything that I need. So now once that my virtual machine start, I can come here and put open. And now I can log in as my user. Sauber lab, put my password again. And now let's uh, check my Docker revision correctly because we install it. And uh, no, it's not installed. Wonderful. We know why it's not installed because it returns exactly this exactly moment that I create my snapshot. If I want to do some tries, I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I want to try some specific application that maybe will be better, maybe not. You always can take as many snapshots that you want and that in this way you can guarantee that you are able to recover in that exactly state. But this snapshot is not perfect. If perhaps your hard drive fail or anything happen, you're gonna lose all this snapshot. So then come the backup option. The backup option, it's one option that it's more trustable. They will take longer to do it and will use more our capacity. So come here and put, let's do a backup. So to understand better, let's do a backup. I come here, backup it. I will select where I want to save because I only have local, I will do it. But in the next videos, I want to show how you can make a point point and use your TrueNAS your open media file or any other NAS system that you have in your network in order to do a backup outside for your system. Why it's interesting to do it? Because if all your hard drive fails, you don't lose all your data. You still have those information outside. So here I leave local and now mode. I have these three modes and it's important to understand what's the difference between stop, suspend and a snapshot. You stop as the name say, they will stop the machine. So when you are doing the backup stage, before they do the backup, they will stop everything and that they will guarantee that in exactly moments, nothing was transferred, nothing was happening that machine. And once that they finish the backup, because they stop, they will keep the stop until we go there and restart the system. But if I don't want to leave it off 
because I want to show, be sure that after they do the backup, they will open again and run it normally. So I can come here and suspend. It, it means that your system will stop for a few minutes until they finish do the backup. And once that they do the backup, they will open again. It's as well to guarantee that all the data is exactly stopping that exactly moment, but you can return to work after they finish the backup. It looks like maintenance mode. And for last will be the snapshot. Snapshot will be the fastest way and the way that you don't need to turn off your virtual machine and you keep running it. Basically, they will get a snapshot for that exactly stage and that will make a backup about it. But what's the problem for it? Imagine that you are transfer a large file or you are doing a database update and it will take some time to have all the data updated. there. In exactly that moment, they start to do the snapshot. So what will happen once that you try to recover it, they will have incomplete information because they was transfer, they was working in that data and they didn't wait to stop to finish in order to have all the data full or integrate of the data correctly. So it's one of the issues for a snapshot, but your system keep running. So if this case don't happen and you don't need to use this backup so soon, that is great because you're gonna keep running your system without any loss of time. Now you come here in compression. Compression, you have a few options of compression, no compression, fast, good, or fast and good. Normally, I like to use the standard one, but you always have the option to select ones that is better for your needs. Other thing that we can do is send an email. So once that they finish you to do the backup, they will send an email say, yes, backup has been done, everything to work, congratulations. So let's do a backup only to understand how fast this backup works. So I put backup, and now they are looking all the information, they do the snapshot, and now they start to do the backup of uh, my data. So they will look megabytes per megabyte, gigabytes per gigabyte, read it and write it after my hard drive, so it will take some time. If I'm doing external or in another machine, the bottleneck will be your network. Because if I look here, the speed that they're writing, it's around 140 megabytes. But so your network, if it's a gigabyte network, will be maximum 100 megabytes. So you're gonna have a bottleneck of speed. Other thing, this backup take time. So it's better to have this time available. In my case, I have a virtual machine without so many items installed. But if you have a, a full 32 gigabytes, they will take much longer to read and write everything. So once that the task is complete, I can come here close and I have my backup done. And this backup have a size of two gigabytes. Is done my job? No, it's not done my job because imagine that I forget to do the backup and that uh, my system is lost and I less backup will have for this date and not in the future. So what's all the option I have? I want to set up automatically backup that I don't need to worry about it. To do it, we go here in data center and this data center you can set up backup for one node two nodes, one virtual machine, or all the virtual machines. So here in our data center, I come here in backup. In backup, I can add some schedule. So I put add, and now I can select which node that I want. If I have uh, three, four nodes and I want to select all the nodes, I can leave all, or I can come here and select that specific node. Other thing, I can look where I want to save this backup. I can put it local, or I can save in another place if I had configured. In the next videos, I will configure it, but in this stage, it's not configured yet. So let's close it. Let's select local, uh, editable. Now it's schedule, schedule. I can select that every Sunday, one o'clock, every two hours, every 30 minutes, every two between 10, they will do backup. So I think that this time it's quite um, good to leave it. Of course, more backup, more data will consume if you don't have uh, so much data. You don't need to do backup every day. Also, if you don't have so much essential items, you can select to do backup once a week. That is fine. Other thing, you can select the type of uh, backup. You can put exclude select VMs, pull base, all, or include select VMs. Let's say that I select uh, these ones and I put, uh, okay, I want to backup those. What's the problem for it? If I create a new virtual machine and I don't come back here and add that virtual machine, they will not do a backup for that virtual machine because it's not select all. It's only select the ones that you select. But if you want that all the virtual machines, all the containers that when you create, they will be backup, you can select all. And as many that you create, they will backup automatically 
and this is what we want. Now we can add our email and select what kind of notification. I can I can select to notify only for failure or I can select to notify any anyway anytime. So I can put any anyway. So all the time that to do a backup, I will receive an email saying it's done. Same thing, compression, I can decide what kind of compression. I suggest you to leave the standard one because it's good and fast at the same time. Mode, I can select what kind of mode. If all the machine is running and I don't want any loss of time, I can put a snapshot. But uh, if you can lose time for this machine, I suggest you put as a suspend. And if you want to leave your computer off after or your uh, virtual machine off, you can put as stop. And you can select enable and put great. Now this task will run every time that you set as a schedule. So they will do it automatically or you can put backup now. In my case, I'm not to do it because I don't need it. It's not a required information, but you always have this option. Now you're going to ask, Alan, I don't see to do a snapshot for everything. And you're not going to see because that snapshot is specific for each virtual machine, not for the node backup. So you're not going to see only thing that uh, you're going to see and do the schedule will be for backup. And this is more stable and more secure. So what I will suggest you if you have more capacity and you have time to do it. Okay, guys, I hope that you like this video. So only to remember before I close this video, what's the difference between backup and snapshot? Backup will be used more with your machine. And that's uh, it's uh, easy ways to recover your data. But if your hard drive fail, that's it. You lose all your data. And backup, it's more secured, but will take a little bit more time and use more memory. Principally, that you are going to use externally. So they will make a, a history for all the backups that you have. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like. Consider to subscribe for this channel. And see you next time. Bye.